And now, actually, it's a pretty interesting startup. British startup that uh, headquarters were in Moscow, out of all places. Why people say in Moscow people like to read? So let me introduce Bookmate, social reading service. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Simon. I'm the founder of Bookmate. Uh, Bookmate is, uh, uh, is a digital e-reading service with strong social features uh, and uh, focused on mobile. We're working with publishers, uh, with brands, and with authors to basically to bring, uh, to make mobile reading available to anybody with a mobile, uh, with a mobile device. This is how most publishers see the world. Uh, so there's strong legislation in these areas. There's, uh, it's relatively easy to monetize. This is how we see the world. And this is a world of a lot of opportunity, but some significant challenges for publishers and authors to monetize uh, their catalogs. So these areas, you have, uh, you have a lot of piracy, low monetization. There's, uh, there's very little physical, uh, physical bookstores. Distribution and logistics is a problem. Uh, and that leads to publishers not, willing, not being willing to invest in digitizing their catalogs, making them available, uh, and a very distressed market in general. So we've, uh, we've designed into our product five elements that, uh, that address these issues and kind of break the cycle. And so those five elements being subscription, mobile, social capital, uh, innovative distribution, and, uh, and data. So a subscription... This fundamentally changes the behavior around reading. When you remove the financial decision to move through a catalog of books so that you can browse, you can discover, and you can engage emotionally with a book and not have to make a decision to actually to pay to download it, um, then you, have a, you, you read more and you have a much deeper emotional engagement with the service. And that allows us to build the value curve, the value of experience, while at the same time, the value of access to content is, de is decreasing. So mobile, I mean, now there are more or less as many mobile devices on the planet as there are people. And for many of those people, mobile devices, it's their only, maybe their only computing device, it may often be their only banking device. Uh, so you may not have a bank account, but you certainly have a paying or billing relationship with your carrier. And so that's the, the perfect device for us to bring mobile reading to, out to the, to the widest possible audience. Uh, and so we've designed Bookmate really to make it available on pretty much every type of device. So we've also optimized for feature phone, for, for mobile web, so that we really can, can take it out, at least the free version of it, out to the widest possible audience and then work on converting that audience up to a, up to a paid experience. So social capital. So this is, this is also something when you're competing. So a lot of these markets are high piracy markets. And we, we've built our service over the last three years in Russia. So Russia is a high piracy market, people not used to paying for content. So you need to focus on, on making it better than free. Better than free means that the, you may come for a book, but you stay for the social experience. So that's the sort of things that we built into the service are things like uh, shared bookshelves, uh, in-app chat and conversation, a Quora-like sort of status move, so you can ask somebody what you want to read and somebody can offer you a book to read. So it creates this behavior that you want to take beyond just the book itself. And you can fall in love with the service as much as you would fall in love with the book. And that creates a network effect so that all of the stakeholders in the service have an incentive to take the service and spread it out to their, uh, to their networks and more, bring more people onto the, uh, onto the service itself. And this creates a virtuous circle. Distribution, so this is, we look, uh, we look for distribution partners. We have B2C, but we also look for uh, distribution partners that have got uh, a strong paying relationship, customer base that we can leverage off. And so here you can see Bookmate, we have B2C, but we also, we partner with mobile network operators, 
So we bundle with tariff plans for mobile network operators so that they have a value-added proposition to increase loyalty of their customers or to upsell customers from one data plan up to another data plan. We work with OEMs, so we have deals with, uh, with Philips, with LG, with pre-installed deals with Samsung, where we'll go out when they localize a phone for a particular market, which gives them, which and we'll offer like a, we'll offer a month or a couple of months to customers to come into the experience to start to understand how the how the reading how the reading works on the device. We partner with retailers, so particularly with retailers, we partner with uh, with consumer electronic retailers. So we provide where they have a transaction-based relationship with the customer, we provide them with an opportunity to continue the relationship with the customer beyond the point of transaction. So uh, we've, we have a deal in Russia with Yomot, which is the largest e-commerce uh, the largest e-commerce e company in Russia. And then we have a range of city initiatives where we partner with libraries, with hospitals, with parks, even with churches, which gets the application out to a maximum number of people. And then we take all of this information and we share it with publishers and with authors so that they actually have an insight into markets and into consumption that they never would have had previously. Uh, and this differentiates us from pretty much all the other book services that are out there where we, we see ourselves as facilitating a relationship between a publisher and author and their customer. So we, don't, uh, we, we make it a very transparent and very clear uh, statistics feedback to, uh, to our partners. So where are we now? Well, we've just, uh, we've just closed a Series A financing last month for $3 million uh, from Yulmart, which is this e-commerce group in Russia. Uh, and that's gonna finance rollout uh, to six new markets this year. Uh, we've got pretty good customer retention, so retention is up about three times this year. And in some of our channels, so in iOS, we're seeing 74% retention beyond the first month. Uh, we've got about 76% of our users uh, are reading on mobile, uh, four and a half months of LTV. We've got conversion from uh, monthly active users to paid subscribers of up to 26% in some channels. So we, uh, we're now, really into this international expansion phase of the company. And so we're looking, for, we're looking for advisors and we'll be looking for investors that can help us with that expansion and that rollout. Thank you. Thank you, Bookmate. And, <laughs> and now time for questions and feedback. You haven't said anything about what deals you have with publishers and how many books you have and what your terms are with them. There's a lot of supplier power to use here. Yeah, so we, uh, the deals we do, we do revenue share deals with publishers. Uh, we work in local markets. So for Russia, we have about 95% of all licensed content on the service. Uh, we've, signed, uh, we've signed deals with most Turkish publishers. We've now launched in Turkey. Uh, we're in the process of doing deals now with Swedish publishers. And we have terms with two of the five major US publishers. Because one of the things, so US publishers are very, re very reluctant to do deals with subscription services. And although there are some subscription services in the US, they're not revenue share deals. They're paper download deals, even though it's a subscription service down the, uh, downstream. So we are, since we're taking them into markets where there's very little cannibalization from existing revenue streams, they're more willing to do the kind of deals that we need to do in, to be able to, in order to be able to scale the business. On these percentages, what, what is the user base that you're referring to? So we have one and a half million monthly actives at the moment. We're getting about 7% conversion off the, off the whole active user base. Thanks. When you're distributing through a carrier, where, where are you positioned? Because it's going to be hard for a consumer to actually find your, your solution. Well, we, so we have a, my background has been with a music streaming service. So we're looking to do the kind of deal. So first of all, it's difficult to get carrier deals. I mean, they're, they're, big, they're big beasts. They don't react quickly, and it's hard to get the right. It's, it's not too difficult to get a deal, but it's hard to get the right kind of deal. And the right kind of deal with the service is one where they activate all of the necessary marketing channels to actually get some voice and to get some traction and to get a network effect within the, within the partnership so enough people come onto the service that they can spread it and it starts to, and it starts to grow. And that means really being going into the points of sales so that the points of sales staff are, uh, are incentivized to, to sell the service so that when somebody walks out of the, of the point of sale, they've actually got an activated application on their mobile phone. And so we found that the, 
the way, uh, the way that that works best is working with operators that have got some experience already uh, with music streaming services. So that would be, for example, a group like Telia, which was the first group to do a deal with Spotify. So they understand, uh, they understand the value of it, and they also understand how to, how to market it correctly to get adoption. So some te Telia now has something, to give you the example of a, of a music streaming service with Spotify, there's something like 90% conversion uh, to, to Spotify. With, um, so they, they understand how, how it can be done. Books is different, it's something new for them. But it's also something, given what's happening, especially in a market like Sweden, where you have like tablet sizes shrinking and smartphone screens increasing, and people want to read on. I mean, the convenience of mobile trumps the comfort of having a bigger screen. So people are reading on mobile. Um, so we're getting, we're getting traction with the operators that have already had some experience with music and see this as a natural extension. Okay, any questions from investor tables? Yes. Or TMT Investments. I have more of a uh, comment. I'm definitely interested. Uh, I think through the presentation, what I was thinking is that I saw uh, a number, and I'm sure some of the other investors saw a number of uh, deals of startups that at least sound very similar to, you, to yours. So I, my feeling is that people interested in this segment, in this space, probably very quickly, you know, investors have this um, horrible, uncanny ability to immediately say, oh, it's like X, Y, Z, et cetera. So my feeling is that it would be much better if you would earlier in the, in the conversation tell us where you are in terms of growth and how you're going to grow because immediately an investor is like, oh, okay, it's like many, many other things. So, and, and you definitely achieved quite a few things. So I was waiting, okay, so is it really an early startup, right. later stage startup? But really, if, if you can very quickly comment, what sets you apart from others, not in terms of the product service, but in terms of your ability to scale? Well, I think there are a couple of things to look at here. I mean, one of it is that the, the market where you're operating is very important. So as I said, like kind of domestic US, uh, UK, some European markets are pretty much closed out for book subscription at the moment because you can't get the deals you need with the rights owners. So if it's not, if it's not a revenue share deal, you have an inherent like, conflict of interest built into it. So if I have a, if I have a if, so if the deals I had with the publishers were that every time somebody opens a book, I have to pay them the wholesale price for a single book. So if you read three books, I'm negative 10 bucks. And if you read five books in a month, I'm negative <laughs> 20 bucks. So then the, my incentive is that my readers should read as little as possible, or they should read like a bunch of like old books. Uh, and that's a kind of, that's a, that's a warped incentive within the system. So you need to have revenue share deals. And revenue share deals, Currently, the only kind of deals that you can get for revenue share are the deals in markets that are difficult, difficult markets. So difficult markets, how do you, they're difficult for a reason, they're hard to monetize. So how do you monetize in difficult markets? You've got to be very good at doing deals. And I think the differentiator is going to be the company that can get out there and do deals and is taking an approach which is building, I mean, right, you have the product, okay, the product is good, the user experience is good, it has to be, because you're competing with free. So assume that you've got a great product. And by the way, starting a business in, in Russia or in one of these emerging markets where you have a lot of piracy is great for user experience because the competition is free. So you've got to be better than what's out there at the moment. So assume that the product is good. Then, you're, then it's about biz dev. Then it's about building like, the best like, deal team you can possibly build. And I think there we have, you know, we have a very strong biz dev team. Uh, we found a number of distribution channels where we can actually monetize directly from the distribution partner. Um, we're, bull we're pulling in people and expertise from music streaming, where those deals, there's already five years of experience of doing successful integrations. Uh, so it's, it's a, who can do the deals better? And that's, you know, and that's really it. And, and who's got a better product? And frankly, they're not, to look at the good products, I'm, I'm not seeing that many you know, great products out there at the moment. I mean, certainly Amazon is not, is not moving into, is not doing these kind of nimble deals at the moment. And they're not in a lot of these markets because they have a paper download model and paper download doesn't work. So, and you, and you need to, I mean, there are a lot of tricks that you can use. So for example, we, ch I mean, Russia is an example. Russia, we charge $5 a month, but we charge, going through a mobile carrier, no one, in Russia, the average balance on account is $3. So how do you charge a $5 a month subscription when you've only got five bucks on your phone? So you do daily charging. So daily billing, if I'm charging 15 cents a day, psychologically, that financial barrier is like, okay, 15 cents, I can afford to pay 15 cents a day. 
Um, and everybody's got enough credit on their phone to pay 15 cents. And if you didn't pay for two days in a row, then you catch up and you pay 30 days when you next put credit on your phone. And it also, that gives us the opportunity to kind of, okay, currently we're, we're testing in a few, so we'll launch, we've launched in Sweden, which is high piracy, but there they've got a culture of subscription and it's a high ARPU market. We're launching now in Turkey, which is like low ARPU and they're not used to, so we're testing a few different markets. And then, then you can then take, okay, we know what the, what each market looks like, and we can then take that and we can really accelerate the growth. And then it's kind of a, and then it's kind of a race. Okay, bookmark, uh, bookmate, <coughs> sorry, bookmate, thank you. Okay, Let's thank, thank you. Let's thank bookmate. <laughs>